This episode was recorded in front of a live audience where viewers voted for the ingredients. It has been edited down from its original runtime. Oh man, what a busy day. Fortunately, the brew that we're going to make today is going to be chill. We are going to do a blueberry wine cooler together, which is going to rely on a little bit of math because we want our wine cooler to be 7.5% ABV or lower, but we also want it to be blueberry flavored. So how do we make it blueberry flavored and not lose any of that with a light, delicate, crispy, refreshing beverage? What you see in front of me here is our durian hooch brew. Palm sugar, I believe, was our fermentable sugar in this. Last week we put it onto a pound of ginger for some reason. So what we're gonna do today is attempt, <laughs> it is so gross dude, there's still so much slime that has dropped out of here. We're going to attempt to, <laughs> to rack this into this swing top bottle. And it, I don't know if you saw that bubble just now, but it is still off gassing. Fortunately, there's a nice blanket of CO2 in here. We're gonna try and get as much of this as we can, not full of crap, into this 750 mil swing top bottle. And then uh, I'll just burp it a couple times a day to make sure the bottle doesn't pop. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> So this one here is the graph that we made. This one had apple juice concentrate, pale ale, LME, sorrel tea, azaka hops, wasabi, and Kolsch yeast, but the Kolsch didn't kick off, so we repitched a different yeast in there. And this was the hooch with cane sugar margarita mix, cherry limeade Kool-Aid, black cherry berry tea, watermelon candy, and W04 Paramount yeast. First things first, these folks are the folks that voted for the style today, which is a blueberry flavored wine cooler. Our base is in this bucket. This is two pounds, four ounces of blueberries that were in the freezer. I mashed them up with some pectic enzyme and they have now broken down and started releasing their juice. If we need to add more fermentable sugar, we're gonna go about it in the same way your local brewery would. We're gonna add corn sugar to bring up our gravity if we need to. Typically those hard seltzers, wine coolers type things you get are gonna be made with corn sugar fermented and then flavored on the back end with some kind of artificial flavoring where I wanna go au naturel, at least from the beginning for our flavoring. Obviously we've got four boxes for y'all to vote on this week. And so we'll be adding to this base of blueberries and potentially dextrose with other ingredients per your votes. And that means that we should get started. What do you call a two-handed sugar? Ambidextrose. So y'all are gonna vote on four different boxes today. We've got acid, tannin, yeast, and wild card. Get hype. Box number one. This is our acid box. So you've got blueberries as your base. Typically a wine cooler is gonna have a nice, strong punch of acid, right? It's meant to be refreshing. It's cool you down on a hot summer day. First option for acid is lime juice. Now we've got whole limes here, so if you wanted, we could also use the zest. Lime juice would be a nice complement against blueberry. Sometimes you'll have like a blueberry lemonade. Blueberry limeade could be similar. Your second option, lemon juice, again, could use the zest from these. Third option, an acid blend. This is old school. It provides a nice balanced acid, citric, tartaric, malic acid. It smells good, it smells like citric acid, really. This used to be the way to go. If you look back at like the old Jack Keller recipes, old winemaking books, a lot of times they'll talk about pitching an acid blend instead of what we typically do nowadays, which is use the acids we want to use, citric, tartaric, malic acid, in the quantities we want to use them rather than the quantities that some lab tech mixed up to mimic the mean acidity of a grape. Your final option is this can of frozen limeade. Frozen, concentrated, 100% natural flavors. Mohamon says, I made a five gallon of white wine from grape juice today. 
used a lemon for the acidity. That's a good compliment. It kind of tastes both like bad apple cider and bad beer. I'm sure some carbonation will help, but we're probably going to decide we want to add a little erythritol or something to that. It's very dry. Something in there that would lift up the apple juice flavor, but also help bring back some of that maltiness. Butter Idea says, I'd like to give a shout out to a brew friend, John. Cancer is currently delaying his next brew. Three cheers to a speedy recovery. I hope you get better, John. You got the homebrewing community support behind you. It's homebrew day, apparently. So all the positive vibes, John's way. Limeade mix is our winner. Interesting choice. I thought y'all were gonna go with limes, honestly. Some lime and lime zest could have been really interesting in this. If we ever do like a rebrew series, maybe uh, maybe that's the direction we'll go. Yeah, how much mix do you wanna put in? All of it? Half of it? We gotta remember, we're trying to keep the ABV kinda low on here. 7.5% or lower. We want this to be crispy and crushable. All of it, all of it, half of it. Tannin, 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 fike. Tannin. All right, let's do the tannin box next. So we need something to give this some mouthfeel, a little bit of astringency, a little bit of added body. The blueberry skins and seeds are definitely gonna provide some tannin. So I tried to choose some things for this box that wouldn't take it too far, take it outside the realm of thirst quenching, right? These tannin options are, they're there to provide another sense of tannin beyond what the blueberries are gonna contribute, but also they uh, are going to contribute some flavor. First option, dandelion root as a potential tannin option. This has been toasted, so it'll provide like a roasty, woody, kind of earthy form of tannin that if we use just enough, like maybe two teaspoons or so, is just gonna provide like an undercurrent of flavor, which I think could be nice. Second option for tannin, organic peppermint tea. There's a warning on here to uh, consult your healthcare practitioner prior to use if you have gallstones or bile duct obstruction, high tall hernia, or acid reflux, or if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. There's no ingredients label on here, but I'm gonna presume that this is just peppermint. Third option, this is licorice root tea. Caffeine free. This would bring a slight tinge of non-fermentable sweetness from whatever is in the licorice root that causes that. And our last option, we have Celestial Seasonings True Blueberry Hibiscus, rose hips, orange peel, natural blueberry flavor with other natural flavors, blackberry leaves, wild blueberries, and blueberry leaves. This one is so incredibly pink. Look at that color. It's uh, still got some sugars in there. Let's go ahead and get a gravity on that. We start at 1.126 and we are currently at 1.056-ish. We may have legitimately just finished out it is hella sweet. I would have liked to have chewed through another 30 points or so before it stopped. We have our tannin and our acid. Whew! Smells like blueberries. Let's move on to our yeast box. Your options for yeast, first and foremost, the thing that would complement these blueberries the best is Premier Rouge. Probably my favorite like entry level red wine yeast. Second option, something that might smooth and tone down this brew just a hair, 71B. Third option, one of my favorites also, D47. Nice white wine yeast. Last option for those of you out there who like a little clout in your life. We've got Scare Kvike. Apo Fox is the one that sent that Kvike into the channel. So those are your four options for yeast. You probably need to get them hydrating, particularly if we're gonna use the Kvike, because it has been dried out. Any of these should be able to tear through the ABV that we're talking about. I think Premier Rouge, probably gonna be the best at maintaining fruity flavors in here. The Kvike is going to be probably the best at creating interesting flavors in here, particularly if we get another hot day in the next couple of days, I'll stick it outside and we'll, we'll crank that sucker up. Oh, 
Apofox disagrees and says that it's actually got a really nice clean lager-like profile. The only thing that I've brewed with this in has been beers, but they've been bigger, heavier projects that I'm working on here. So I wouldn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make some tea, get our tannin going here. Man, I was just obsessed with the internet as a kid. Now, it wouldn't seem abnormal at all. It's 1995 and you're 10 years old. People look at you like, what's internet? It's just so fascinating to me as a kid. All right, we got our tea boiling. It's picked up a nice color. See that red? Look at that. Look at that color. Premier Rouge out in front. Interesting choice. I really thought y'all would go with the Kvike. You're kind of like throwing me off today with these choices. This is this is going to be a disaster. I'm feeling it already. A little bit of a mess. A little bit of a mess. We all good though. Nothing the local ant population can't take care of. That is ugly as sin. It's not overpowering, which I believe was our concern. And the durian has not faded. Ah, no concerns. No concerns about durian strength. Ugh. I think you might have been right though on the quantity of ginger, even though it looked comically overboard. The ginger helps cut across some of that durian. The durian flavor is strong. It's not hiding in there. It's one of those flavor profiles that really makes you say, hmm. It's spicy and kind of banana-y. It's very dry. And you can kind of pick up the honeysuckle in there a little bit. It's weird. It's not gross. Send a bottle to the winner of Mead Stampede. Maybe. I'm not gonna rehydrate our yeast. Red Star Premier Rouge should do just fine in this, so we'll just pitch it in dry. How long were we gonna do the tea? It's been a while. Should I taste it? I feel like I should taste it. Woo, it's punchy. That's extracted some pretty good tannin at this point. Blueberry flavor is there. This would be really nice as like a sweet tea. Wild card. We've got some interesting choices in here, especially in line with what y'all have already chosen. First option, this one was brought to us by Man Made Mead on a previous episode. I don't know if this was featured on the episode. Wild Berry Amaretti flavoring. Y'all know from my channel that I think these things are weird and I am not a huge fan of brewing with flavor compounds. However, reading the label on this one, it includes cane sugar, dextrose, fructose, natural flavor, blueberry, boysenberry, raspberry, and strawberry. So it is natural-ish. Second potential option, powdered dry lemon peel. I don't think we'd use the full bag. Third option, this is homemade vanilla extract. And this vanilla extract, this was made with, I think it was Woodford Reserve whiskey. Strong whiskey notes in there. Now I'm gonna smell vanilla for the rest of the day. And our last option, blueberry flavor powder. No idea what this is actually made of beyond it saying gum Arabic, GMO free maltodextrin and natural flavors. I'm very curious what the natural flavors are in this. It appears to be a white powder, potentially a spooky white powder, TBH. That said, this would thicken this guy up a little bit and probably add some blueberry flavor. I have no idea how much of this we would need to add in there. But you may remember from a previous episode, we used the freeze-dried powdered raspberry from Olive Nation in something and it turned out okay. The raspberry flavor was in there. This is not that. This is, I don't know what this is for. Cupcakes maybe, bagels. Those are your wild card options today. Homemade vanilla extract, blueberry powder, wild berry amaretti or dried lemon peel. I'd love to see the merits of those discussed. I like the idea of the vanilla just because like we're talking about making something so tart and punchy and sharp and fresh that adding some vanilla extract that would just kind of like brush it all flat a little bit could be kind of fun. Especially if we get like a punch of acid and then a smoothing factor. If we can execute that well, that could be fun. This stuff's kind of weird and gross. I don't know how I feel about it. 
I shouldn't have stuck my nose directly in it. It's very strong. It does, it basically just smells like berry syrup, like berry jam. The lemon peel we used in a brew once. I will agree that vanilla doesn't like fall into the wine cooler family of flavors, but I definitely think that it's like the funnest conceptually to, to play with. We're at about one and a third gallon. Man, these blueberries have just really broken down. It's wild that mashing them up, adding pectic enzyme, and giving them just, I mean, maybe 24 hours, they've just kind of obliterated themselves down to floppy little, can you see that against my giant? Just little skins. Like all the pulp has just vanished. Yes, the limeade is already in. We are at 1.011. Very light. So we will have to add some dextrose in here. Anyone want to run that through mead calc for me? We're trying to get it up to, I don't know, what do you say, like 1.05? All right, looks like vanilla extract is going in. According to RTP Medic, we might have to go up to one pound, four ounces. So let's start with one pound, two ounces, and then we can adjust up if we need to. Fun fact about me, I'm a gamer. We're at one pound, one ounce, and I've emptied the bag. Let's see where one pound, one ounce takes us. Man, my favorite thing about brewing with dextrose is it dissolves like so readily. Any guesses where we're at? 1.042, 1.030, 1 1.047, 1.035, 1.00, yeah. Somehow it got lower. So we're at 1.048 like right on the line of 1.048. So I think I'm happy with this. I don't really know that there's any need to, to go harder on that. It looks like we would, if, if we go dry, we'd end at 6%, which I'm perfectly comfortable with. So let's do it. Let's roll with it. I think this is perfect. I think it smells just like a freaking fruit bomb, which I'm delighted by. It smells like limeade and blueberries, like you would expect. Let's get our yeast in there. I'm gonna like go on the principle that we don't need any, uh, any nutrient in here. Now, if it's still not chugging along here in a few days, I might chuck a little bit of dap in. We've got all those blueberry skins. We've got a pretty chill form of sugar in there. Oh yeah, did we ever decide how much vanilla is going in here? Let's do a tablespoon. All right, vanilla's in. You gotta remember, in the olden days when I started brewing, a decade ago, you might throw in some urea-based dap but that was kind of it. A lot of times we just relied on the fruit and that's why our stuff tasted like gasoline after it was done. Obviously, things have changed since then. One of the major things that has changed is I've, I've reasoned up a little bit and stopped trying to brew everything to 16% ABV or higher. So even then stuff's drinkable a little bit sooner. I have a feeling this is going to be done fermenting in three or four days, and so I'm a little bit shoulder shruggy about adding nutrient to this because I don't think it's going to need it. Now, if this was 10%, 11%, you'd hear a different tune out of me. Okay, so today we have brewed up a wine cooler with two pounds, four ounces of mashed up macerated blueberries, half a can, six ounces of limeade concentrate, There's two bags of steeped blueberry celestial seasonings tea, a tablespoon of homemade whiskey-based vanilla extract, and Red Star Premier Rouge red wine yeast. And we had to bolster that up with one pound, one ounce of 
dextrose. We've got an OG of 1.048, so we will ferment this out, ferment it dry, get it clear, bottle condition this, and have ourselves hopefully a nice crisp blueberry cream wine cooler to enjoy. And uh, thank you for, for tuning in. It's been a good Saturday. Have a good weekend, everybody.